In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add inputs to your React 3 Fiber scene and only play animations when we press buttons. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlibs and welcome back to my channel. We've learned a lot so far and if you want to follow along, I highly recommend watching this entire playlist from the start. Let's jump right in. In the previous video, we've added this component, which imported a model, extracted the animations, and then it allowed us to play an animation in our scene. But what if we only want to play an animation when we press a key? For instance, if we press the W key, we only want to walk. And if we press W and hold down shift, we want to run and spacebar to jump. Well, we can do that. But first things first, let's actually reorganize our application because there's folders everywhere. So the first thing that I want to do is create a new folder and call it SRC. And then we're going to move some of these folders inside of our source directory. Start by moving the pages folder inside of the source. Then let's just update the imports, move our components as well into the source as well as our styles. So we should have the components outside. So your folder structure should look like this now. You should have a source directory with the components, pages and styles. A good way to see if you broke anything is to stop the execution in the terminal. I'm going to press Ctrl C and then I'm going to run npm run dev. When I do that, the application should restart and we have a very squashed metaverse. Now it looks pretty cool, but that's not what we want. So if we go back to our code, we can delete this dot next file. When we do delete this, let's exit the execution in the terminal. Control C and then let's run npm run dev again. This will now create for us a new dot next folder. And after a quick refresh, we are back on track. And now we have a better structured application. We have our public folder and a source directory. The source directory is where all our code goes and it's nice and neat. The next step to go ahead and add some inputs is we're going to make use of our own custom hooks. And that's also why I created the source directory. We want to keep everything nice and neat inside of it. Right click, create a new folder and call this hooks. Hooks are not as scary as they seem. Basically a hook is something that adds extra functionality to a function. And you'll see it being used throughout React, especially with functional programming. React provides us with a lot of hooks as well, and we've used some of them before. For example, the use effect is a hook, and you can tell that by the use keyword in front of the word. This is the convention. Now in our hooks folder, we are going to create a new file. We will call our hook the use input.ts. So this will be our hook that we can use and later on import it and make use of it in a function. In the file itself, we will export a constant function, basically the use input, and then let's create a new variable. We will call this our input and set input. This will be equal to the use state hook from React. And for the default values of this input state, we're going to give it an object and this object will have a forward backwards, left, right, shift, jump, and all of these will be set to false as the default state. Our hook needs to return something. So what we'll return is the actual input itself. I've seen this solution a while back on Stack Overflow, and I think it's a very elegant solution, creating a hook for the inputs. Essentially, we want to manage these Boolean variables and turn them on and off if a key is pressed to determine what the user wants to do. 
Now, how would the program know whether a user is moving forward, backwards, left, right, and so on? Well, we can create a keys mapping that the computer will understand and what we want it to be. If a user presses the W key, we want to say that the user wants to move forward. And that's how we will determine this. So add this object to the hook. Then we'll add a tiny function, which is the find key function. This is a arrow function and all it takes in is a string and it returns us a value of this object. So essentially we will say find key, key D and the right value, the string will be returned. So this function will return to us the string and with this, we can actually update the correct Boolean. Now we will need a use effect hook. A use effect is something we've seen before and this hook kicks off whatever is in here only once when this array is empty. This makes it perfect for adding your event listeners only once. So the two event listeners that we want to add is the key down and basically the key up. Now here are two handler functions that we still need to define, but essentially every time the document picks up that we have a key down press or a key up press, these functions will kick off. We can define these two functions above our listeners and here they are. All these handlers are doing are either turning a Boolean variable true or false. And how do we determine which variable we need to turn on and off? Well, firstly, we are using the find key and passing it in the event. And we are passing the key code. So essentially what will happen is we will set the entire state here and we'll extract all the existing state. We'll go and find the key where the string is equal to the key code for example, key W, it will pick up that it needs to be forward and it will try and set this forward variable to true. And in the other case, it will do the same if there's a key handle up and it will turn it false. We are almost done, but the last thing that we need to remember to do is do some cleanup work in the use effect because we are going to be adding event listeners. Now it's a good idea to also remove the event listeners if it was created. And this will happen when we dispose of this component, whenever the use effect is done doing its work. All right, and we are done. We can now essentially use the use input hook to determine if we are pressing a key. So let's go and apply this to this my player that we've imported. And let's actually see with console logs what happens when we press keys. So in this my player component, let's go ahead and import our use input hook. Now, just remember to add the import over here from our hooks and we extracting these variables from the input that we are returning. In the my player component, we already have a use effect. So I'm just going to comment out the action playing for now. And in the array, the dependencies, let's add our inputs. We want code to kick off every time that a value on these variables changes. For testing, we are going to console.log all the values by appending the key as a string and then the actual Boolean variable to check the state of all these variables at a given time. When you have done this, save the file and let's go back into our application. I'm going to open the terminal and if you can't right click, you can always press shift command and C. And here we are in our console. To start fresh, I'm just going to clear the console and then let's go ahead and press W. As you can see, I've pressed W and forward was true. And when I lifted up the key, forward is now false again. I can do the same with shift. And we can see that at some given point, shift was true. 
and then shift was false. Now we know that we can get user input, so this is not necessary anymore for testing. But let's put it to good use and play some animations if we press the relevant keys. In order to swap out animations, we will need to know what is the current action playing. So let's get rid of this console.log and let's actually create a new variable. This will be our current action and we will make use of the use ref hook and initiate this value to an empty string. Then in the use effect itself, let's go ahead and create a new variable and call it action. And this will be set to empty when it starts off as well. Then we need to do a few if checks. And what do we need to check for? Well, we can say if we are going forward or if we're going backwards or if we're going left or right, then do something. In our case, we actually want to set the actions value to walking. Now we can set this to walking because we know that our model should have a walking animation or a walking action. And else, what do we want to do if we're not walking? Well, we would like the action to be set to idle. Now this will work, but our character also has a jump animation. So technically we can also say else if the jump is true, then we can also set our action. So I'm just going to take this to jump. And now we are basically saying, if we are busy moving, play our walking animation. If the jump is pressed, then jump. Or if we are not doing anything, then just simply idle. Remember, we also have a running animation and that we can check inside of the first if statement. Here we can check if shift is actually pressed. And if that's the case, we can then set our animation to running. And that is it. And to make this all work, I'm going to add this piece of code. Now let me explain what it does, and then we're going to check the results. On line 45, we actually have an if check to check if the current action, which is our reference, if the current value is definitely not equal to our action over here. And that is important because we don't want to do something if we don't need to. Next, we create a variable, and that's going to grab the action animation that we have now set. So if walking is the next action to play, this will be set to walking. The current animation is basically the action that was set previously. Then we fade out the current one and we reset and fade in to play the new one. And then lastly, we update the current action, the reference to the given new one, the walking. What's nice about this implementation is that because of this use effect, we only will ever update stuff if we have a key press that fits in here. So if we go back to our browser and refresh, we should see our character in idle. And if I press W, it starts walking. If I press spacebar, it jumps. And if I walk and press shift, we can have our character running. And there we go. We have a character that's now doing some cool animations when we click buttons. This is very cool, but you might ask, why is the character not moving forward? And the reason is we need to implement that code. Now that will do in the next video. But for now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, let me know in the comments. Give me a like on this video and remember to subscribe. You don't want to miss out on these content pieces that I put out. And... Till next time, have a fantastic day. Cheers for now.